This is the fourth and last video in the basic gas law calculation series. And in today's video, we are going to look at the combined gas law. Now, before we get started, I just want to quickly remind you the units we are dealing with today are volume, pressure, and temperature. And I also want to remind you that temperature has to be in Kelvin even if they ask you for the answer in Celsius, it's like a key in a lock. You have to plug it in in Kelvin, and then you can convert it back at the end if you need to. And remember, to get from Celsius to Kelvin, it's a really easy calculation because all you do is add 273. Easy peasy. Now, let's take a look at this first example. A sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 6.5 liters at a pressure of 760 torr and a temperature of 120 Kelvin. What volume will be occupied at 850 torr and 250 Kelvin? Now, something you notice that's a little bit different about this problem compared to the other problems that we have looked at. Nothing's constant. It looks like everything is changing. So how are we going to handle that? Can we do a problem like that? The answer is yes. It is possible to have a sample of gas that is increasing or decreasing in pressure, increasing or decreasing in temperature, same thing for volume. And when all of those things are changing, it's a little harder to um, anticipate what your answer should be at the end but it's still just as easy to plug the numbers in to get the answer. And you'll see what I mean. These are very easy. So um, first thing I'm going to talk to you about is what does the combined gas law look like? Now, if you'll remember from Boyles, Charles, and Gay-Lussac, anytime we have dealt with pressure or volume, they are always on the top, meaning the top of the fraction. Anytime temperature has been involved, it's always been on the bottom. Our ones are always on the left, and our twos have always been on the right. So we can actually take all three of those equations and combine them into one big thing called the combined gas law. And that is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And again, I want to remind you where this comes from, and then it just makes so much sense. Um, Boyle's law was P1 V1 equals P2 V2. All we were dealing with in that one were P's and V's, and they were always on top. Charles's law was V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. These, again, are always on the top, but you can see when we bring temperature in, it's always on the bottom. Again, all the ones are on the left, the twos are on the right. And then we looked at Gay-Lussac's law. And Gay-Lussac's law was P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Again, if a pressure or a volume is involved, it's always on the top. Temperature is always on the bottom. One's on the left, two's on the right. So it makes sense that if you put all these together, if nothing is held constant, you're going to end up with this nice combined gas law where P's and V's are on the top, T's are on the bottom, 1's are on the left, 2's are on the right. So honestly, if you know this gas law, you can always remember the other three. So it's just an easier way to do things. So let's take a look at the problem. A sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 6.5 liters at a pressure of 765 torr and a temperature of 120K. I can see everything in that first sentence goes together. It's this volume at this pressure and this temperature. And yay for me, temperature is already in Kelvin, so I don't have to change anything. What will the volume be at 850 torr? Remember, the leftovers are your twos, P2 and 250K, which is T2. It looks like I am solving for V2. I have every single part of this equation except for that V2. So that's what I'm solving for. So let me show you a really easy way to rearrange this. Sometimes students get a little bit overwhelmed with moving all this stuff around, and it's real easy. So P1V1 over T1 
equals P2, V2 over T2. Now, I am solving for V2. And because I personally am not a math person and I don't like looking at stuff on the top and stuff on the bottom, I'm gonna cross multiply. That's gonna get everything on one nice neat line and that's how my brain likes to operate. I'm gonna do these first. So V2, P2, T1 was this times this equals P1, V1, T2. And remember, this order does not matter. This order does not matter. You just have to have the right things together. Still solving for V2, but now this is a lot more doable for me. I can just, everything's neat. I can see what's going on. I know that if I just divide both sides by P2, T1, that I'm going to be able to solve for V2. So there's my formula. V2 equals, y'all know i got to rewrite this, P1, V1, T2 over P2, T1. I have everything exactly where it's supposed to be. I've already got everything labeled up here. I'm literally just going to pick these things up and put them where they go. That's how I like to operate when it comes to these chemistry problems. So P1 was 765 Tor. Tor is just a unit of pressure. Just go with it. That's what they gave me. Volume 1 was 6.5 liters. Temperature 2, be careful there, it's the second one, is 250K. Now you're going to divide all that by P2, which is 850 Tor. And T1 which was 120K. Just be careful not to get those T's mixed up. For some reason, that's where I always make my mistakes. Now, let's take a look at what we've got here. I can see tours are going to cancel. I can see Kelvins are going to cancel. I'm left with liters. That's good because they asked me to solve for volume. So what we're going to do, and be careful with your math here, multiply everything on the top. You might want to jot that down. Multiply everything on the bottom, jot that down, and then you're going to divide the top by the bottom, and your answer is going to be 12.1 liters. Now, this one's probably a little harder to reason through and see if it looks good because everything was changing, but if you plugged everything in with the units and you can make sure the right things are canceling, as long as you didn't get ones and twos mixed up, you're in good shape. So there's a few more things involved, so it looks kind of nasty, but really it's just as easy as the other problems we looked at. So we're going to do one more of these problems just to make sure that you've got it. So again, a good time to jot down the problem, try to do it yourself, and then we will go over it together. A sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 65 milliliters at a pressure of 0.992 atmospheres and a temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to say 16 plus 273. And I'm getting 289. I just like to have that ready to go. What volume will the hydrogen occupy at 0.984 atmospheres, that's another pressure, and 25 Celsius, which I know is 298K, and that's my T2. It looks like, once again, I am solving for V2. Are you always solving for V2? No, it just so happens the problems we did are asking us to find that. So let's go ahead and write our combined gas law. I know I'm using it because everything has come to the party. So... P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. I am solving for V2, so I'm going to cross multiply V2, P2, T1. I multiply this by that. Now I'm going to do this side equals P1, V1, T2. I am solving for V2, so I'm going to divide both sides by P2T1. Then 
V2 equals P1, V1, T2 over P2, T1. This is the formula that I am using. It's all set up and ready to go. So let's plug in. We've already marked everything um, in this problem, so we just pull it down and put it where it goes. P1 was 0 0.992 atmospheres. V1 was 65 milliliters. T2 was 298K. P2 is 0 0.984 atmospheres, and T1 was 289K. I'll be careful with that. It's very close to 298, so watch that little detail. That one just about got me. So now we're ready to calculate everything up. So we are going to say... The top first, everything multiplied together, 0 0.992 times 65 times 298 equals 19,215.04. Just in case you need to do a little intermediate step here, go for it. Sometimes I have to, and sometimes I just feel more comfortable doing it that way. The bottom is 0 0.984 times 289, and that equals 284.38. I'm going to divide. 19,215.04 divided by 284.38 and I'm getting about 67.57 milliliters. So I went from 65 milliliters to 67.57. My volume went up just a little. Let's just kind of see if we can see if that makes sense. My pressure went from 0.992 to 0.984. So my pressure went down a little bit. That would definitely make the volume increase. And my temperature did go up slightly from 16 to 25. So with the pressure releasing... That's going to increase your volume. The temperature going up a little is going to increase your volume. I didn't have a huge change. It went from 65 to 67, but that actually makes sense. So that's probably right. So that's how we do a combined gas law formula. So now you've seen Boyle's law, just pressure and volume. You have seen Charles's law, which is just temperature and volume. You saw Gay-Lussac, which was temperature and pressure. And now you have seen the combined gas law which is everything put together. The next law we'll go over is a little bit different, and that's going to be called the ideal gas law. So that will be the next video that I post. I would definitely encourage you to make sure you've done the first four basics before you try the ideal.